I just got access to the new Framer AI beta. I've been waiting to play with this forever, so let's click this button and see how it goes. So I've written my first prompt, a landing page showcasing a mobile app that helps people who play pickleball track their progress and learn how to improve their play. The app is called Pickleballers and the brand is colorful and playful. I cannot wait to see what happens after I hit this button. All right, here is the first site I've ever generated with AI. We got a nice orange background here, which I guess goes with playful. And then we have like a black and white image showcase. Not really hitting on the colorful and playful brand, although we do have some fun little cloud components here, which is interesting. And then it looks like these are some CTA cards and a final CTA section. Not the most inspiring yet, but it's a fun starting point. What I'm really interested in trying is playing with these different themes, being able to just click that button and have the entire website evolve like that is pretty pretty fun, especially early on when I'm thinking about what a website can become. Being able to just click a button and see a completely different vibe is pretty intriguing and I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that. All right, round two is a website for a Denver brewery called Tart that specializes in sour beer. The vibe should be fresh, modern with citrus motifs and lots of product imagery. I think this hero section nailed it. The wide font looks very modern. Even the layout looks modern. And I'm really pleased with the yellow color and even the way that this image highlighted the lime. This really impressed me. As we go down the page, this section is a little bit less compelling. It doesn't have any of that color. They really leaned into the black and white. I'm still kind of learning how much detail to give it in terms of the specific sections that I need because I wouldn't have suggested a section on Meet the Brewers. So that's gonna be something I'm gonna try next time. And then we also have pricing cards, which I don't love the design, but it did hit that modern citrus color palette at least. And then we have sour creations with some black and white images here. And you can imagine in the future, I could come in here and pretty quickly generate some imagery based off of more specific criteria. Another thing that Framer is doing is when you select a section, you have this little AI button here. And if I click that, it changes it to dark mode. So I think it's actually shuffling through themes in isolation. So you can see like the text change, for instance. And right away in three clicks, that looks much better and a lot more on brand with the rest of my site. Now I kind of want to try that on the hero section as well. Fun. Honestly, I can't get over how good this hero section is. When I started this, I thought it was gonna be a little bit jank, to be honest, but this hero section is dope. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. I'm gonna try again and see if I can get a little bit more specific in terms of the sections that I want included and see what framer gives me. All right, for this third attempt, I'm gonna try to get a lot more granular. I've basically described something similar to linear in the prompt, and I'm pretty excited to see what I get. So I've listed out the very specific sections that I'm trying to achieve. I've even said things like a bento grid style, which to be honest, I have pretty low expectations that that's going to work. And then I've outlined the specific vibe that I'm looking for. Dark mode with a purple primary color, lots of gradients and transparency. I cannot wait to see if this gets even close. You know that office meme where Pam is looking at the two pictures and she says, that's the same picture? I think if you put this next to the linear site, that would be people's response. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of it is not bad. I kind of like the subtle grid lines. That's totally a trendy tactic that you see a lot of. Some of this side-by-side -side layout is interesting. These cards are not bad. It didn't like my bento card grid prompt at all. Apparently that means nothing to AI. We have our testimonials here and a big bold join the future of issue tracking with a whale in the sky, which honestly I kind of love. One thing that I have noticed is that the buttons are very simple. So that's something I'm gonna be trying next time is to see if I can spice up these buttons with my prompt. This image makes me smile a little bit. I'm not really sure what's going on here or what it has to do with issue tracking, but I respect the fact that we have some kind of like a logo pattern here that actually is kind of cool. All right, this one is in the books. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think I might just ship this and start a new side project. I simplified the prompt for this next one, a vintage inspired page for a jazz festival in Austin, Texas called Jazz Jams. The page should use lots of background textures and shadows. 
I specifically wanted to see, can AI generate good shadows? Because I haven't seen them on any of the pages yet. I didn't get the shadows that I was looking for here. Everything is still pretty flat, but I do really like this background pattern above and it set me up with a little twee emoji here where I could actually come in and change this if I'd like to something else. So that's kind of fun. I'm also pretty impressed by the font. I did say vintage inspired page and I think this here pretty much nailed it. So that is encouraging. My absolute favorite part of this site is the final CTA section. Stay in the groove, baby. Can't beat it. Let's mess with some themes real quickly. Again, this is why I could see something like this being more valuable early in the project where you're still just trying to get a feel for what something could be. This is where we landed for Jazz Jams, the all new festival that you are not going to want to miss. I wanted to try to generate a really different looking template for this last one. So I set a portfolio page showcasing full screen images taken by a photographer named Rid. The page should be clean with a white background. I've seen a lot of different colored backgrounds, so I wanted to test that. And then I also haven't seen a full screen image, so I wanted to test that. And it did get the top part relatively right. A trend I've noticed though, is that a lot of the images that Framer puts into these templates are using grayscale 100%. So as an aspiring photographer, I was probably looking for something a little bit more like this, but it was still encouraging to be able to generate this full width image. Part of the prompt was to have a white background. So we kind of missed the mark on that because the whole page is gray, but it's an easy fix. If there's one thing that Framer crushes on, it is CTA headings that make me chuckle. I'm gonna leave you with this. Stay snapped on RID's ravishing revelations. If that doesn't make you want to subscribe to my RSS feed, I don't know what will. Was it perfect? No, of course not. But honestly, I didn't expect it to be. This is still super early, but it was really cool to get a little bitty taste of what it might feel like to generate whole sites or sections or themes with a click of a button. There are some pretty natural extensions that I could see to the current product, like being able to regenerate just an individual section or maybe be able to feed in a specific color or maybe even an image to dictate the theme of the site. AI tooling is still in the very first inning and I can't wait to see where Framer takes it from here.